obtained in the previous championship fight. This time, there is no three knockdown rule in effect. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hall, for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout of the evening is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. Jose Suleiman, President, Supervisor Aristo Manrique, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dr. Elias Ghanem, and Chairman. The commissioners are Dr. James Nave, Dwayne Ford, Freddie Little, and Jay Nady. The executive director is Chuck Minker. The officials assigned for the next bout of the evening by the governing bodies. The judges are Dolby Shirley of Nevada, Adrian Morgan of Wales, and Ray Solis of Mexico. Your referee is Mills Lane. This is the final event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing in the blue corner. Introducing in the red corner, from Hartford, Connecticut, weighing in at 146 pounds, with a professional record of 43 wins, five defeats, one draw, with 26 KOs. He is a former WBA champion and is currently rated third in the world by the WBC. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger, Marlon Starling. And in the blue corner, from London, England, weighing 146 and one half pounds. His professional record consists of 33 wins, one defeat, with 22 KOs. He is the reigning WBC welterweight champion of the world, Lloyd Hunnigan. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, wait, wait a minute. Now, both of you protect yourself at all times. We've already gone through the instructions. Any questions from the challenger is two seconds. Any questions over here? Let's get it on. Come on. These are two pros, but how much of themselves will they spend in this first round trying to express their dislike for each other personally? They first met at the Donald Curry Milton McCrory welterweight unification title bout in 1985. Took an instant dislike for one another, and now they get to act on it. Just like I stated, it won't be a feeling out process. Hannigan, this former style, is going to try to make a street fight out of this fight. Good left counter by Starling as Hunnigan missed trying to get past the peekaboo defense. Carling coming straight in with the jab. His upper body's always in motion. Bill's lane is always uh, telling uh, Hunnigan to watch his head, which was expected because of the style of Hunnigan. You'll notice here, inside, Marlon keeps those hands hot. He waits for his man to throw a punch, then he retaliates. Good uppercut inside by Starling. What I see in Hunnigan, his chin is up there. That chin is wide open for any punch, especially the right hand. Hunnigan fighting out of a southpaw stance. He does this from time to time, although most of the time he'll be in a conventional stance. Now he goes back to the left-hand lead. But in doing so, Jim, he, Hunnigan is leaving himself wide open because when he throws his punches, watch the right hand of Marlon Stalin. Starling is landing the more effective blows. Hunnigan has a tendency when he gets frustrated to start winging punches wildly to the side. For now, he's still trying to come up the middle against the peekaboo defense. No question about it. Stalin has the better defense. He's keeping those hands high because he learned a mistake earlier. He's trying to pretty much measure that right hand of Hunnigan. Hunnigan bouncing punches off of Starling's glove. We got the left hook around. Right hand is wild. Those shots 
thrown by Hunnigan are not doing any type of damage because their arm blows. He doesn't have his balance because his tendency to switch to southpaw stand. Starling in and out, always with the hands up, and countering when he can. And right to the body was the first time in a minute that Hunnigan actually planted his feet to throw a blow. He keeps coming, Hunnigan keeps coming out with that, that left hand down, or right hand down, rather. A left hook should be there. Going by Starling. Right hand counter by Starling, and that round demonstrated the difficulties that Marlon Starling poses tactically for a Lloyd Hunnigan. That was a very fast paced round. Both fighters have had problems with stamina in the past. Just yeah. take note of that. Stick him, stick him. You'll find him if you pick your shots. You pick your shots. Concentrate on finding him without getting hit, Lloyd. You understand? That doesn't mean that I want you to run from him. Stick him, stick him without getting hit. You understand? He's giving you arms and elbows, not giving you a lot of room. But that's all right. That'll all come down after a little while. I'm going to get that body up off your head. Get out underneath those shots. Remember, uh, when, when you're backing out, he's going to loop the shot. Be careful. Keep your hands up. Or go down low or step over to the right. You sit, all controlled and neat. Tight and neat. Since Starling has been with Clutch, he has fought much harder in the early rounds. You saw in our punch stat computations the huge difference in the number of punches thrown in the first round, but there was virtually no difference in the number landed. Starling the more efficient fighter in round one. And you wonder how frustrating it must be for Mickey Duff to try to tell Huntington to fight tight and neat. You see Great what, right counter by Starling. You Star see what's happening, Jim? That Starling is counter punching. He's picking his shot. Whereas that you see in Huntington, Huntington is just throwing punches spontaneously. Not really uh, picking a shot like he should. <laughs> this is when it's dangerous for both men. The heads are close. They both are winging shots. And whoever should raise up should be knocked down. Hunnigan bouncing a lot of punches off of Marlon's arms in there. Still throwing for the sake of throwing. Those punches thrown by Hunnigan are all punches, and they're being telegraphed. So what Stalin may do is time one of those punches. Marlon is not known for great punching power. Ray, I've noticed that Hunnigan is, is throwing effectively to the body in this round. Well, he, he was told to try to bring those hands down of Stalin. But Starling can't keep those hands very, very high. And that time Starling stepped up and missed. There's the left hand that got through. You see what happens too is when, when Hunnigan gets hit, he loses composure. And that's a fatal mistake for either fighter. Look at him just winging away. I don't know why Starling went back, back, take a step back and punch. And he's doing it now. Hunnigan still firing punches right at Starling's defense. Starling missed with the left. And now Hunnigan gets up inside. Because Starling is stepping back and throwing a right hand. Nothing, nothing. It was nothing there. Good, Good right hand by Starling off the counter. Starling's just picking this man apart. He's really doing a number here on Hunnigan. Defense by Marlon Stahl. Picking Hunnigan shots off with his glove. Another round in which Marlon Starling has been by far the more efficient warrior. I agree that Starling has been more efficient, but I think Starling, I think Hunnigan, who is throwing 
many, many more punches. And that has to be taken into account. More numbers, like you, all right, more numbers. John, don't load up. Work. All right, quick combination off to the side. Let's take a look as both of these fighters are standing right in front of each other. A good right hand, a very solid right hand by Starling. But you're getting, you're getting to him already, okay? You're backing him up. All right, check it. Hey. Round three begins. According to punch stat computations, Lloyd Hunnigan threw 115 punches in round two, landing only 18 of them. But your point is well taken, Larry. If the busier fighter is to be given credit by the judges, that is the champion in this bout. Mills Lane again warning Hunnigan against headbutting. This is a beautiful display of counter punches by Marlon Stalin. He's taking his time, very poised, looking for those counter shots. If I was Stalin, I would come back with the left hook. Now watch here the right hand of Lord Hunnigan. Watch how he drops it as he throws his jab to get inside. Darling seeming to rest a little bit right now. Eddie Futch had asked him between rounds to throw more combinations in countering, not one punch at a time. But now he appears content to play defense and pick off Hunnigan's shots. Lloyd is pawing a little bit, losing some steam. Well, Hunnigan is not doing right. Watch his jab. He throws his jab and he drops it. It becomes a lazy left jab. And those are the best type of jabs to count with the right hand. Not many punches from Starling and certainly not the combinations that Futch wanted. But Hunnigan is slowing down the pace, either out of frustration or perhaps a little bit weary. Hunnigan's bringing both feet together. That's the easiest way to get knocked down. <laughs> Neither man landing anything effective so far in this round. Someone's mouthpiece came out. It looks like Stalin's mouthpiece. Marlon's mouthpiece dropped right out. Very brisk pace by both fighters. More so, more action from Hunnigan. Although Stalin's shots a little better, a little cleaner. Two clean counter shots by Starling. Not a lot of impact, but they landed. Hunnigan throwing wildly. That right hand seemed to momentarily wobble Starling. Got him on the top of the head. Willie Pep, the last champion from Hartford, once told Starling that when you're a young fighter, you have to remember to pace yourself. And when you're a veteran, you have to remember to fight. And the question is whether either of these guys is pacing himself for what looks like a long, grueling fight that could be determined in the last four rounds. Hunnigan took what he thought was a low blow and said, ooh. Starling for the moment steps in to try to take advantage and takes a shot from Hunnigan as a result. Hunnigan still be aggressive and try to throw that looping right hand, which could uh, Stalin on first for a second. 
and going to the body more, and I think Lloyd is beginning to pierce that defense really for the first, first time. He's picking the tempo of the fight up now. He's starting to make the fight, make Stalin fight his fight. The left hand was blocked, but there is a school of thought that you keep landing on the upper arms, keep landing on the shoulders, and you're going to wear your man out. Well, especially for a guy that's so physically strong like Lloyd Hunnigan. I mean, every punch does damage. Certainly, Hunnigan has a fighter's will, big time. Now, right here, this is when you do counter punching. When a man is straight in front of you, both feet together, this is when you counter with the uppercuts. For Stalin, I can't understand why he's not throwing shots tonight. Marlon is not coming back anymore, as he did in rounds one and two. That's a typical Lloyd Hunnigan miss. Now, watch some uppercuts. A couple uppercuts there by Stalin, where you need to throw more. Come back with the left hook. Starling planted his feet and just missed with the right hand inside. There he is. That's the uppercut. And that will work all night, Jim, because the man is down. Got a left hand in, followed it with another. Hunnigan not coming back at the moment, and Starling lands four good blows in a row. How effective that uppercut is. Just land it. And Hunnigan just pulling forward to try to take Marlon out of this little run. He's both men have spent a lot of energy because they're missing some big, big punches. More and more, Hunnigan is able to pin Starling against the ropes and wail away hasn't been able to do anything that effective with it yet, but it could be a portent of things to come. Some respect from um, Lloyd Hunnigan. A tough, tough fight. Lloyd, Lloyd, you can't have a war. You've got to be smarter than him. You're lounging, you're lounging, and you're letting him pick you off. You understand? Now, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Listen. Take a deep breath and change, change your attitude, will you? Change your attitude. Just walk out, walk out, and make yourself scarce not to get hit. He's making you do all the work. Harold Letterman, our official, unofficial official, tell us how you see the fight so far. Larry, I've got a 39 to 37 mall installing, and I disagree. I say, you know, you don't, you don't look at who the champion is. You got two guys in a ring, and they both got an equal chance to win. You score fights based on clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense. And Stalling is winning on defense. I respectfully disagree by one round with you, <laughs> Errol. I have it two, two rounds apiece. Round five begins. There's a momentary delay in Hunnigan's corner. Mills Lane giving the champ a chance to put his mouthpiece in, and now here we go. Marlon Starling landed some of his most effective blows in the last minute of round four. You heard Mickey Duff tell Lloyd, you can't fight a war. I don't know how easy it is for Lloyd Hunnigan to fight anything other than a war. Well, he's trying to box Starling, and Starling's on the attack. Looking shot to the bite. Oh, some beautiful combinations. Saw Starling for the first time pin Hunnigan to the ropes and stand toe to toe, slugging away. Now, if you watch the inside fighting of Marlon Starling, he does his pity pass, pity pass, and all of a sudden he throws a couple of hard shots, very serious punches. He tries to lull this guy to sleep. Cut counter inside, increasingly effective. Those 
There's another one. Some serious shots now. Serious punches by Marlon Starling. Starling more and more developing an under then over sequence. Lord Hunnigan is breathing from the mouth. Good indication of fatigue or arm weariness. This is the fifth round. It's scheduled for 12. Mouth and Hunnigan wide again in the southpaw stance, Ray. I don't know why, Lord, why Marlon Starling's turned southpaw. He's doing okay with all the duck style. What can Honeygan gain from fighting in the southpaw position, Ray? Well, he's not really that effective. In anything, he's trying to throw his man off. Good right hand by Stalin. Because he doesn't fight that way often, he's going to get shot, hit by a lot of right hands. There's right there. hand counter there. It was preceded by a left dab. Honeygan better go back to the conventional stance, and he does right now. Left hand inside, stopped Honeygan cold. Starling knocks out Honeygan's mouthpiece. A big round from Marlon Starling. In this round, Huntington tried to fight a more controlled fight, being less of a brawler, and it didn't work. I think he's going to have to go back to plan A. One impressive thing about Starling in this fight so far is that there is no apparent after effect of that devastating knockout in his last fight. A lot of people were curious to see how he would respond to that knockout in this fight. Well, of course, to his advantage, Larry, he doesn't remember it. The look on Lord Huntington's face, which is a perfect <laughs> alibi. The look, the look on his face, he looked like a defeated warrior going back to his corner. He may have been more confused because I think he, he, he just fought a fight that he didn't expect to come here and fight, if you, which he's trying to fight now. This and man look is, at Lloyd running from Marlon Starling. He's retreating. In other words, Lord, I mean, Marlon Starling has momentum going, and he should take full advantage of it. This is not the fierce frontal assault warrior we've always seen Lloyd Hunnigan to be. This is not the man who thoroughly intimidated a Donald Curry, who was thought at that moment to be one of the best fighters in the world. Starling now, target practice inside. Oh, this is great. This is great for Marlon Starling. He has a he has finesse, he has the power. He's putting his punches together. The jab, everything is working now. Well, Marlon Starling, regardless of what you may think of him otherwise, is a professional boxer. But he still must be extremely careful because Hunnigan still has that punch. Walking this man down, Marlon Starling, he's trying to cut the ring off. Lloyd Hunnigan, who was throwing 125 punches around earlier in this fight. He seems to want to regain his conviction. The rest can stay away from Starling for a while. When, when Lloyd Hunnigan moves, although he's, some of his jabs are landed, he doesn't have the best punch when he's mobile. Well, and I think as long as Hunnigan is content to do this, Starling isn't going to take any foolish chances. Just take his time and pick his shots. That's what he's doing now. This, it would appear, plays right into Marlon Starling's hands. Because he doesn't have to work as much. All he has to do is follow his man, a jab. This is not Lord Hunnigan's fight. And Starling is getting off first in every exchange. He is initiating everything. 
as Larry Merchant said, it's going to have to be back to plan A for Huntington. He better, Huntington better do something fast because that right eye started to swell. Right hand by Marlon Stark. Another round in which it's hard to make an argument for the champion. They the go by the way, those got their hands and get to get to. Long these movements, jab, jab, cut him off. Ready, Ready to make the Got problems here. Deep breath, deep breath. One more. In this round, a good right hand. That was the punch that knocked the mouthpiece of Hunnigan into the third or fourth row here. Without a doubt, Starling has won the test of wills in the first half of the fight. Unless Hunnigan can turn that around and turn it around quickly, this fight is lost and the championship will change heads once again. An interested spectator, and you'll be seeing him here live on HBO on February 25 against Frank Bruno, the undisputed heavyweight champ, Mike Tyson. Round seven begins. And listen to these punch stat computations. Huntington threw 115 punches in round three, 122 in round four, 106 in round five. He threw 40 punches in round six. I noticed another thing in Huntington. When the bell rang, he wanted to touch gloves. Now, that's not characteristic of Lord Huntington. Normally, he shows that brassness. He Maybe he feels he'd like round. to start over. His right eye is beginning to close up. The result of consistent pounding with the left jab and the left counter inside by Starling. And now Starling seems to want to go after it. Starling has lost his mouthpiece now. When you're, when you're tired, like Lord Huntington is, this movement here only wears you down. You notice the legs don't have to spring anymore. It's bouncing flat. You see here, a little off balance. His legs are not steady at all. Starling takes advantage of the absent mouthpiece to start talking to Lloyd Huntington. Ray, you once came back to defeat Thomas Hearns with an eye almost completely shut. How is it going to bother Huntington to be fighting with the left eye closing up? Well, it's not too bad yet. In fact, Huntington just lost his mouthpiece. So both guys are breathing very deeply, trying to get that additional breathing here. But it appears to me, Jim, that uh, Huntington is not on steady legs. Let me just correct myself. I may have said the left eye. It is the right eye of Lloyd Huntington, which is closing up. Not the left. The right eye is the one. Playful antics by Marlon Stalin. Well, he's a little bit of a con artist in there and always has been. They have given away too much in two fights against Donald Curry, trying to psych him out. Here, it doesn't seem to be hurting him yet. From Huntington's side, this round looks a lot like round six did. He is retreating, trying to pick his shots, and it isn't working. Well, Lord Huntington is not really fighting back. He's giving this round to Marlon Stalin. Blood on the shoulder of Marlon Starling. It's probably come from inside the mouth of Huntington as he fights without the mouthpiece. There's no steam in the punches of Lord Huntington. He needs to gain some respect here. Will this be called a slip or a knockdown? It was a slip. He threw a punch. He was off balance. Didn't have too much support from his legs. He's well, round to seven him. comes to a close. Lloyd Hunnigan may have given up on this fight. That's Hunnigan being handled his right eye. 
closing. You're way behind now, you've got to start getting into the fight. Yeah. You won't get in the fight by letting him walk all over you. You've got to stay your ground and make him miss. Yeah. But not brawl with him. No, no. Make him miss and stick him there, but then try and back him up. You all right? You all right? Yes. You okay? Yes. You're not tired? No, I'm not. No. Good, then go out and work. This is the kind of fight the British skeptics of Hunnigan wanted to see him in and see whether he would have the answers. We'll find out. Darling now is the every litmus. Darling is chasing Hunnigan a lot more now. He looks really to me as though he's not scared of Hunnigan's punches at all anymore. Hunnigan is hurt here. At this point here, Stalin should back away, give himself some punching room. And not allow Hunnigan to smother his punches. Hunnigan is standing still and taking it. Marlon Stalling, if he can put together two or three good combinations has a chance to get his man into watch, serious trouble. Watch for his left hook. Watch for Stalin's left hook. It's a beautiful shot. Knocked him out, peace out with the right cross. That's one of his best punches, the left hook of, of Marlon Stalin. Right hand lead just missed. Hunnigan standing on the ropes and taking it. It's a lot of time left. More than a minute and a half still to go in the round. Darling doesn't knock people out with ease. He's going to have to land a flurry of several punches. Starling wants to catch that chin open up uh, Hunnigan with his overhand right. Hunnigan just pawing with the left jab. That takes so much from him. We miss those big shots like that. Well, Starling stopped punching and gave Hunnigan a chance to catch his breath a bit. So for the moment, the crisis has passed for Lloyd Hunnigan. The right jaw of Lord Hunger is, is swollen. It's really swelling up. He's starting to look as though he's got the mumps or as though he's just had his wisdom teeth pulled out. I wonder if Starling has broken Hunnigan's jaw. Just picking this man apart. Lloyd lands the left hook, or check it, Marlon lands the left hook, right on the place where Hunnigan's jaw is swelling. Oh, look at the legs of uh, Lord Hunnigan. Yeah, that jaw could be another reason why he's having trouble keeping the mouthpiece in. Get that tape off. You sure? Yeah. It's all right. The jaw's okay. It's a bruise. It's a bruise. It's a bruise. I just squeezed it. It's a bruise. Katie, let me take a look. Open your jaw. Okay. Doctor is examining Honeygood's jaw. Yeah, she ready to fight? Huh? Can you go on? I just did, doctor. Tape on the jaw is okay. Tape on the left hand. Tape where it's hanging. Yeah, you're all wet. You're all wet. Okay. 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 Here we see Honeygood landing a good straight right hand. Scarling, that is, landing a good straight right hand. But it's the other side of Hunnigan's face that's swelling up from the left hand. Well, I'll tell you, if that jaw is all right, I'm Mike Tyson. Harold Letterman, what's your scorecard right now? Seven rounds to one, 79-73. Very, very easy for Marlon Stalling. And I agree. Four rounds to go. Marlon Starling 
headed toward a possible second world championship. Won the WBA title, lost it on a freak knockout to Tomas Molinaris of Columbia last summer when Molinaris caught him after the bell in Atlantic City. Some people thought he might have trouble coming back, but he had been brilliant for six rounds that night against Molinaris, and he's been no less brilliant tonight against Lloyd Huntington. That in the case, the, uh, the determination of Molinaris started here. He's really doing a great job and put his punches together. Just, it looks like a matter of time. Counting for the knockdown right now. Huntington looks at the knockdown Five, counter and then, six, seemingly with reluctance, seven, gets up. Eight, now, now you're going to see a real workman go to work. Marlon steps in. Huntington throws wildly. There's blood coming from his nose. And Mills Lane has seen enough. Is a champion again. Lloyd Huntington was a beaten man by the third or fourth round when he was beaten out of his aggressive style. If you can make an aggressive fighter back up, he usually has no other answer. Stalling won the fight in the early rounds. This was just the icing. And we saw a clinic of defense and counterpunching by Marlon Starling, Ray. Well, that proved to be the key to his fight, the counterpunching of Marlon Starling. He was rocked in the early rounds, and he was able to get, regain his composure and get back to the bases. The jab, he took his time and did a great job of counterpunching. Marlon Starling hates Lloyd's Hunnigan's guts, and he's always said that Hunnigan was made to order for him as an opponent. Tonight he proved it. Well, you see now, it's just a matter of time when Starling started to put his punches together. Some brazen punches, but I think it was just an accumulation of punches that wore Lord Huntington down. Those sharp right hands, razor-like sharp right hands, were effective from the fourth round on through. I also saw in Lord Huntington that he was losing a lot of confidence, Jim, because he was not firing back, and he was trying to outbox Marlon Starling. Well, he had a badly closing right eye. He had what looked like a broken right jaw jawbone. And he had little reason to try to prolong matters, being as far behind as he was. Watch his legs. There's nothing there. His legs are like jello. The body shots go straight right into the body. And Mills Lane did the right thing of stopping to not doing more further damage to Lord Hannigan. Yeah, because he could have gotten his jawbone seriously hurt with another solid blow on the break. If, in fact, it is broken and... It's hard to imagine, given the amount of swelling there, that it is. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Chuck Hall for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 19 seconds of the ninth round. Referee Mills Lane stops the bout. The winner by a TKO and new WBC welterweight champion of the world, Marlon, the magic man, Starley. A big victory for Marlon Starling. A big victory for that man, Cedric Kushner, the dark-haired gentleman behind Starling who has waited and waited for this. That is Starling's son. And this is a victory for single fathers everywhere, as this is boxing's most prominent single father, Marlon Starling. And he has put the belt around the waist of his...